from Alan Kerr. That damaged his shoulder. He's finally back. He is back. He still has time to make what might be not a highlight film this year for the Flyers, but a feature film, and it might be a disaster film with the kind of year the Flyers have had. He hasn't scored 50 this year, but he's capable of developing that pace into the playoffs. That is the ingredient the Flyers have not had all year long. Well, he's been consistent when he's been in the lineup, a guy that's been in the lineup for the Islanders all year. Mr. Consistency, their leading scorer, Pat LaFontaine. And we know that Pat LaFontaine saves his biggest moves for the biggest audience. It will be a big audience tonight, and as the playoffs get closer and closer, he gets bigger and better. He is the game breaker that the Islanders need and count on to score the big goals in the big situations. Super setup, and when you have two teams with pride, how do you go about picking a winner? <laughs> I'm pick picking a tie. When you put on the jersey, the Islanders put on their blue, orange, and white. The Flyers have the orange, black, and white. These teams have a tradition of winning, and that is the big boost that they can count, off going in, count on going into the playoffs. It's not only finishing in first place that's important. It's the pride and the prestige of finishing in first place because you are either an Islander or a Flyer. Big setup, great atmosphere here tonight, Tom, as the Philadelphia Flyers and the New York Islanders go at it again, and you're the man who's going to keep an eye on the roll, all the rest of those games tonight for us. That's true, Mike and Bill. I'll be very busy indeed because you see just a few miles away from the Nassau Coliseum in the Meadowlands, the New Jersey Devils and the Pittsburgh Penguins are going at it. In fact, there are five games around the NHL tonight. Let's start with one game already underway at Le Colisee in Quebec City. The Quebec Nordiques hosting the Buffalo Sabres. Nordiques need a win to help stave off elimination, and they've already gotten the first step towards that victory. On the power play, you're going to watch Paul Gillis take the shot for Quebec, and Stephen Finn gets credit for the goal at 10.40 of the first period. It is Quebec 1 and Buffalo nothing. Meanwhile, at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, the Washington Capitals and the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit strikes first. Dave Barr with a drive from the point. Brothers Gilbert Delorme with a drive from the point. Dave Barr controlling it in front of the net and poking it in. Uh, sorry for that uh, video problem there, but Detroit leads it one to nothing. Pittsburgh and New Jersey are underway. There is no score, but the New Jersey Devils are now on the power play early in the first period at the Brendan Byrne Arena. A little bit later on tonight, the Winnipeg Jets will be at the PNE Coliseum to skate against the Vancouver Canucks in a game that means nothing because Vancouver has already been eliminated from the playoffs and Winnipeg will finish third in the Smythe Division. Up next, it's a game that means a lot. The Islanders and the Flyers. It's the NHL tonight. About our customers, we provide only quality coverage at affordable prices. The same is true today. From Neil Theaters Everywhere. The NHL tonight is being brought to you by Mercury. The shape all tonight come from the Philadelphia Flyers and the New York Islanders. The Islanders on top for now in the Patrick Division. They lead the Flyers by three points. And, of course, in second place, pursuing the Islanders, also the Washington Capitals. We'll be keeping track of uh, all the games tonight affecting the Patrick Division standings. You see the Islanders on top by just one over Washington, by just three over Philadelphia. We'll also be keeping an eye on Pittsburgh and the Jersey Devils, as will the New York Rangers tonight. The Rangers are going to be watching uh, the NHL tonight with interest. And the Adams Division. Division. Well, it's all over at the top, uh, almost. Montreal has all but clinched first place. Boston has an outside chance still. Buffalo, with a win tonight, could lock up third place. Hartford has a seven-point lead on Quebec for the fourth and final playoff spot. Should Quebec lose tonight, then the Hartford Whalers would uh, lock up that fourth and final playoff spot in the Adams Division. The New York Islanders, with 45-goal scorer Pat LaFontaine, uh, leading the way, take on the Flyers tonight with uh, Ron Hextall back in uniform. But we understand that Mark LaForest, indeed, will be playing goal. And LaForest has been playing quite well as of late for the Flyers, who just went through another dry spell not too long ago, but it rebounded in a big way their last couple of efforts. Tim Kerr, who's missed almost a full year because of shoulder problems, he scored a hat trick the other night. That has to be a big boost for Philadelphia. And they had a 6-0 shutout victory over the Winnipeg Jets, and Tim Kerr had three of those goals. Now, we'll be cutting in quite often tonight to that game between the New Jersey Devils and the Pittsburgh Penguins. There is no score about midway through the first period at Brendan Byrne Arena. Right now, it's time to go to the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, Long Island. It's the New York Islanders and the Philadelphia Flyers. We're ready for Patrick Division Hockey on the NHL tonight. Mike Emmerich. Thank you, Tom. Seventh and final game of the season series between these two teams. Mark LaForest off the heels of a shutout against Winnipeg is making his fifth start in the last 20 games. The rest, of course, have belonged to Hextall. Billy Smith at the opposite end of the ice tonight. 11-26 and 7 lifetime against Philadelphia. In the previous six games, he's not played. But he has been strong this season against all the rest. 
Referee for tonight's game, Andy Van Helleman, Mike Civic, and Ray Scapinello are the linesmen. Gerald Diddick and Dennis Potvan, the defense. Makala, Trotche, and Gilbert, the front line. Mellonby Sutter and Smith for Philadelphia. Howe and Samuelson in back. And it is Scott Mellonby. Second year sensation out of the University of Wisconsin. Clearing and Trotche scaling one back that is held by LaForest. It is Howe flipping for Sutter. Sutter, another one of the players, recently returned to the lineup. They are getting Sinasalo back tonight. Only Huber, Tockett, and Zezel are out from a multitude of injuries that the Flyers have suffered. Only, you say only. Well, Tockett, what a loss he is. Zezel, Willie Huber, a regular on defense. It has been a disastrous month of March for the Flyers as far as injuries are concerned. Derek Smith battles with Makala. Sutter with a jab involving Billy Smith. Delayed penalty call is on. And it will be Sutter who will go and protest to Andy Van Helleman. An exchange with the goaltender cost the Flyers two. 57 seconds gone in the first period. Mercury, the cars that change the direction of the wind, directing the flow of the rushing air to help keep them firmly in contact with the road. Mercury, the cars that change the direction of the wind are changing the direction of automotive design. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. Well, Mike Keenan has figured out who he's going to send out to kill the penalty. He's got Prop and Poole in up front with Mark Howe and Shell Samuelson back. We'll take a look at the eighth-ranked power play in the NHL, the New York Islanders. Last year, they were number two overall at the end of the year. Right now, they rank eighth. Ranking, to me, is not that important, Mike. It's if you're on the up curve, on the upswing, and improving as the playoffs begin. Hot Van connects with Trotje, watched by Howe. Trotje has Janssen for a moving screen and hands to Brent Sutter. Thomas Janssen, then to Trotje. LaFontaine waving his stick high. He wants it on the left circle. Trotje to, J to Janssen again, then to Potvan. Now they get it to LaFontaine. Potvan with trouble caused by Poulin. Prop unable to knock it away. And here's Potvan with a shot handled by LaForest. And Dave Poulin just lays it back down. And Prop is striding back after it. Billy Smith swings it away to LaFontaine. A minute 12 to go on the power play. A minute 45 gone here in a scoreless first period. Isn't it something? season is 26 weeks long and it comes down to the final Tuesday of week 26 and still six positions in the Patrick division standings and there are only six not determined top four make the playoffs Janssen to Potvan fires trapped and held by Mark LaForest well great concentration by LaForest Potvin was waiting for the screen to happen he just about had it Brent Sutter was in front Brad Marsh was trying to hold him out of the play Good containment all around. Watch Potman tee this one up. Top right of your screen. See LaForest, the goaltender. He can see it, just see it, and just able to move to it. Brent Sutter almost looks like he was trying to push the other way. He probably didn't know where the puck was coming from. Very often, when you get into one of those pushing situations in front, it's difficult to keep your focus on where the puck is. You have to forget about it, concentrate on digging in. Sometimes you lose track of where it is. 46 seconds to go on the power play. You may have noticed that helmet mask of Mark LaForest. You know, when they went to so much cage, it took away a lot of the creativity from those masks. But LaForest has the growth of tree branches with Flyers logos attached to them. It's very ornate. Islanders must recover at center ice, and it is handed by Norton over for Diddick and the return. Norton, the Olympian, on to Makala. Checked by Howe. Puck spun by Al Hill. Norton retrieves with 25 seconds to go on the power play. Tom Meese will keep you updated on Pittsburgh at New Jersey, Detroit at Washington, Buffalo at Quebec tonight. What a night in the NHL. And we're pleased you've joined us here on ESPN down to the last 10 seconds of the Islander power play. Norton hands over to Makala and gets it back. They go for LaFontaine, denied by the long reach of Shell Samuelson. 
Diddick forced further by Craven, and that causes the puck to go all the way back, and the Flyers get a shift change. That was a good read by Samuelson. There was one bad pass. Norton didn't lay it right for LaFontaine. Samuelson read it, moved to LaFontaine immediately. That's how the Flyers broke up the play, by reading it. King shoved by Crossman. Pelly Eklund comes by to control. Good barreling into the boards by Alan Kerr, and they tried to reach Basson with a pass that went astray. Conroy taps. Thrown back in by King, and the Flyers chase. That gives the Islanders a chance to complete the change they wanted. And that'll bring out Dale Henry. Puck turned right on LaForest. Brought back up by Brian Propp. Prop and Tim Kerr moving two on two, and Prop takes the drive and very calmly swung away by Billy Smith. Basson's toss is to Henry, then to Janssen, tries the return. LaForest tried to shake away from Henry and still was able to get control. Henry on Eklund. Crossman took the hit but cleared, and that hit came from Alan Kerr, who steps into Prop just as well. Now Brad Marsh shoulders with Kerr. Puck to Henry. Looks for a pass and a good Ooh. shot on goal by Ken Morrow. Here is Norton moving in. Norton got right to the front and then it was hooked off his stick and went wide. It is Henry. Duels with Brad Marsh. And it's bodied away so Eklund can clear and the Islanders keep the pressure on. You know why they're keeping it on, Mike? They're winning all of the one-on-one -on -one confrontations. They'll have to give chase. That's what, that's what the game is all about. It's a whole series of one-on-ones. The Islanders were dominant in the Flyers' corners in that sequence, and they pressured as a result. It is Norton laying it on back for Greg Gilbert. The forechecking is Dave Brown. Puck knocked away. Don Knockbauer out as well for Philadelphia, and also up front Ilka Sinisalo, who hooks not once but twice at Gilbert. Gilbert angles. LaForest watching. Puck taken by Mark Howe. Potvan waiting. Muscled by Dave Brown, and so having to follow up his Diddick. Sinisalo is back. Shots are four for the Islanders, just one for Philadelphia. No score here, but a chance for Howe. Howe curls the net, looks for a pass, still has it. Pass tipped away by the checking of Gilbert Makala in a race with Samuelson. Down he goes. Play continues as Mark Howe angles it back around. The Islander fans are steamed. Full house here tonight. This is the 39th of 40 home games and only the sixth time that the Islanders have sold out as Scott Mellenby moves in for a shot by Sutter. He scores! And then Mellenby winds up on top of Bill Smith. But the Flyers have gotten the first goal in this important game. Well, that's the second time in a matter of seconds that the Flyers have broken up the play just outside the Islanders' blue line. Obviously a crucial area. I have a feeling Billy Smith was fooled on this. Watch when Sutter gets it away. First of all, nice pass right here from Mellonby. There's the pass. Watch Sutter shoot. He is hit right when he shoots. Billy Smith knows he is going for the long side. He is going to Billy Smith's right, and it took him a while to react. I think Sutter might have been shooting for the far side of the net. When his stick was hit, the whole shot was redirected one way or the other. It's still a huge goal for the Flyers here in the first period. They lead 1-0. Janssen's pass is off Brent Sutter. Poked by Crossman, regathered by Sutter. Conroy slides back across. It is Janssen angling for Henry's corner, but he's bumped off by Mellonby, and so it's an easy LaForest handle. Kept, though, by Janssen. Flyer starting to follow through on their checks now as Terry Huffman rides his man to the wall. Stoppage of play with 13.50 to go in this opening period. Sutter's eighth has made it 1-0 Philadelphia. Blue. Blue. Labatt's Blue. The evening is night. Blue Heaven. I hurry to my Smooth. Clean. Crisp. Labatt's Blue. Oh, turn to the right. Imported beer from Canada. We'll lead you to my Labatt's Blue. Blue. Yeah. Heaven. Late in the first period at East Rutherford, New Jersey, the New Jersey Devils, Pittsburgh Penguins, there is no score. Each team has had a power play opportunity. The goaltenders have played well. We'll keep you up today. Let's go back now to the Nassau Coliseum. The Flyers leading the Islanders 1-0. Mike? Terry Simpson at the New York Islanders bench. He is a defensive fundamentalist. 
And really, if you look at these two teams, they both pride themselves and have over the years on their defense icing called against Philadelphia. They sure do, but it's offensively that the New York Islanders uh, have been uh, so impressive this hockey season. Last year, they finished 17th offensively. This year, they are sixth. They are also fourth defensively. When you're in the top half a dozen in a 21-team league, in both of those categories, you know you've done something really well. And I, I just look at the New York Islanders team, and I still have trouble finding out where their strength is. The LaFontaine sticks out. I don't think they really have gotten the goaltending that they have thought they were going to get this year. Brent Sutter kind of sticks out. But all in all, I look at the Islanders as a bunch of overachievers. They get more out of what they have on this team than anybody else in the National Hockey League. No one figured this, that the Islanders would be first and would have the chance to really decide a great deal of their own fate because they're playing Philadelphia, the third place team tonight, and the nearest team to them, Washington, here in two nights, both games at home before they go to New Jersey on Saturday afternoon and into Boston on Sunday night in a game that they hope will be meaningless. Thomas Johnson hands to Wood in front and a shot sent wide by Brent Sutter. It is Wood and Brent Sutter is hurt behind the net getting up very slowly as play wrapped right around to him and he's pressed to the boards by Brad Marsh. The battle continues. It's fed along by Tim Kerr and brought back up by a prop. Loose puck tipped away by Prop, spun back for Kerr, but it is fed back out by LaFontaine. Take a quick glance at the Islander bench to see how serious it appears with Sutter as moving in now is Eklund, and his backhander went wide. Wasn't that a typical Sutter move, though? He was hurt on the play. He got up, and instead of avoiding the puck, he went right back to it and got squashed again against the boards by Brad Marsh. Looks like a bloody nose. Craig Smith, the Islanders trainer, Tending to him now. Well, he round the lip, maybe. Yeah, he, I would think if he's looking, and, and if the bottom lip looked as if it was cut a little bit too. If if the cut is spread out or the damage is spread out, you usually can tell it was something more than a stick that hit him. It might have been an elbow. Here's some of the action. Here he is cutting in. Let's see what it is. Oh, it might have been the stick of Kerr. Up, yeah, it might have been the shaft of the stick of Tim Kerr. You know, we want to make mention, uh, in our telecast in Buffalo, John Shabbat left the ice after taking a couple of shifts. He really had his bell rung by Mike Polino. We get a chance to see this again. It looked as though the stick of Kerr came up across, and that caused the damage. But we're glad to report that Shabbat will only miss Detroit's game tonight in Washington. A mild concussion, but he'll be back for the weekend. From the faceoff, it is... Ken Morrow shuffling it back. And so Shell Samuelson will take over for Philadelphia. Derek King moves it along. Across for Kerr shot and a good challenge by Mark LaForest. Craven's pass tipped loose to Eklund. Moves in with Sinasalo and fires one. That seemed a knuckleball. Samuelson shoved by LaFontaine. Pinching in this time is Mark Howe. Howe tried to feed one, but that off the back and taken by Norton. Murray Craven forechecking feverishly here. Huck fed by Eklund toward Craven, tripped up by Smith, and it is Norton taking over. Alan Kerr steps back out. No relation to Philadelphia's Tim. Big 80-footer eaten up by LaForest, and he just sweeps it back out. I'll bet LaForest style has changed since being around Ron Hextall. I bet it has, too. Along comes Crom, drops to Potvan, and a shot just over the top. Popped back out by Philadelphia. Dave Brown and Al Hill are the front liners for Philadelphia with Don Knockbauer. You know, you end up looking so darn dull, don't you, if you don't shoot the puck like Ron Hextall? There's a lot of pressure to be Ron's partner. If you don't bother working with the puck, you look dull. Billy Smith earlier this year said, I'm not going to be doing that. But if there's anyone younger than me in the league, he should be doing it because that's the way the game's going as Knockbauer knocks on Crom. Huffman and Crossman, the defense for Philadelphia, both move on this one. And is Gerald Diddick flipping but missing Crom. 10 minutes, 40 seconds to go first period. In case you're just joining us, a big night on ESPN. 
One to nothing, Philadelphia leading here. Fans applauding the collision. Crom on Brown, who has words for Andy Van Helleman about no penalty call. Down to the ice goes Basson, and now there'll be one. Delayed call is on. The Flyers touch, and the Islanders will get a power play. 10.26 to go in the first. Ron Sutter's goal makes it one nothing, Philadelphia. When the heat's on, motor oil viscosity can break down. To help keep your engine cool, trust Haviland Supreme. The motor oil is cool under fire. Haviland's viscosity booster helps protect engines against wear under extreme heat and stress. Up ahead, Haviland Supreme, cool under fire. Serve the American road. Well, you can see the tempers are definitely heating up in New Jersey. That's Rod Buskis of the Penguins and Randy Veloshek of the New Jersey Devils going at it. There's still no score there. As we go back to Uniondale, let's update you on other games around the National Hockey League. After one period, Quebec leads Buffalo 1-0. After one, it's Detroit 1 and Washington nothing on a Dave Barr goal. And now with the Islanders going on the power play, let's rejoin Mike and Bill. Including this one. Every score tonight is of significance. Quebec has a hope to keep it alive. They've got to beat Buffalo. Play continues now on this power play. The second one of the night for the Islanders. Janssen along to Brent Sutter. Checked by Poulin. Puck flopped and then sent to the point to Potvin and LaFontaine's one-timer was wide. Janssen looking. Brent Sutter is screening LaForest in front. Janssen's drive, directed back out by LaForest. Another shot, save LaForest. Scramble at the front of the net, and LaForest is on top of it. We're getting an idea of what they mean when they say LaForest has become Philadelphia goaltender number 1B. <laughs> That's what Keenan said. He said Ron Hextall's number one, and instead of saying LaForest is number two, he said he's number 1B. A lot of action by the Islanders in this first period. The Flyers obviously are in a situation here uh, where they can expect trouble. They are down a man, but it has been all Islanders in the first period. The Flyers are still leading one to nothing, and the problems the Flyers have had have been when they've ended up in their own end. That's why Mark LaForest's job tonight is going to be more and more important as this whole evening goes on if the Flyers can't get out of their own zone. Janssen over to Potvin. Along to LaFontaine, and then Brent Sutter. Wrapped up by a big shell Samuelson. A cluster converges, and Dave Poulentil's trying to work it away. Trotje, hooked at by Samuelson. It's quickly sent to Potvin for a drive. Knocked down in front. Brent Sutter tries to get a shot away, but can't get it through. They score! Samuelson inadvertently put it in. You know, it was a good job by the Flyers of clearing people out in front, but there is the thing that could have saved them. Did you see LaForest try and grab it and miss it? They cover well. They cover real well. There's Ron Sutter knocking his brother Brent down, but Brent from a falling position, I'll tell you what, he just hail married it towards the net. Samuelson was there to try and stop it. LaForest couldn't recover in time. Boy, I'll tell you what, Mike, if LaForest stays down, he's able to stop that. But you have to get back up and try and get back into position. LaForest, as he was getting up, gave Brent Sutter a couple of feet. Samuelson wasn't able to stop it, and the Islanders have tied it. I just wonder if he had in his sights at the time, if he even knew where the puck was. No, that's an instinct. He was going down. All he wanted to do, knowing that LaForest, I know he knew LaForest was down. So all you want to do is try and get it back in front and hope that you guys will outnumber the uh, the defenders when they're in front. Potvin and Janssen get the assist on Brent Sutter's goal. So it's Sutter one, Sutter one. Here at the 10:31 mark in the first period, Brent Sutter is connected for the 28th time this year. Prop with a shot directed away by Billy Smith. Power play goal for the Islanders, who are one for two in that department on the night. Here's Basson, along to Henry, and a shot is trapped and then held by Mark LaForest.
take a look at the glove that Mark LaForest wears. The, the trappers are getting bigger and bigger to cover more area. And it's amazing the technology and the materials that are used right now. There's Bobby Nystrom, ex-Islander great, who is now behind the bench with Terry Simpson. But the materials now on those gloves, they can have so much size, but not be any heavier, and still have the same amount of protection. I wonder what this game was like over 60 years ago when there was a rule that said goalies can't go down. And then there was a rule passed that said they couldn't pass the puck. Huh. I know one it must thing. have been very slow. Ron Hextall wouldn't have lasted, would he? <laughs> no, not at all. Nor would Tony Esposito have lasted. Always going down. The Forrest watching from the tie-up. And it's right in on him again. Mark LaForest has faced 11 shots so far in this period. Boy, they've been close in attempts, or good ones with screens. What a battle. Red Sutter still trying to muscle it along. Henry given a shove, but he's controlled it. Gives it up, though, to Crossman. Ilkis in a solo, headman's along to Kerr, and he's blocked out by Norton. And there'll be a penalty coming up. It's against Philadelphia. Islanders to go for power play three. Game tied. The new shape of Mercury Topaz with optional all-wheel drive. It moves like the wind. Even in the rain. the shape you want to be in. Yeah, eight days to go. It's going to be great between now and then, but you just turn up the juice. It's, More ohms and watts. It, it's unbelievable for everybody. It's, it's my favorite time of year when we sit up here and work because we get into a rhythm. We're doing a game a night, a game every two nights. The players love it. Not when they're sitting in the penalty box like Tim Kerr has. The Flyers are having their problems here in the first period. That's the third minor they've taken. That one was for retaliation. It was Tim Kerr slashing Jeff Norton back. Maybe it's because Tim Kerr has been out of the lineup. He's got all kinds of nervous adrenaline waiting to go. But that discipline better start getting into focus as this season winds down. You can't afford any dumb penalties from now on. Johnson presses Samuelson. That's a good point you mentioned on discipline, Bill. Two slashes and a cross check. Those are the Flyers' penalties tonight. Oh, offside on the play. As the puck must recede, the attacking team across the line, and Pat LaFontaine was just a millisecond early. What an outstanding season he has had again. He was just presented with the trophy. He was the fans' pick, wasn't it, Mike? I was trying to pick up on it before the game. He was once again the fans' pick. There's the offside. That was a good call. Somebody had to be right up on the play. But he was just selected as the best Islander again this year by the fans here in Long Island. He deserved it. $1,000 check presented to him, and he immediately turned it over to three different charities. Pot van to Janssen. The forest turns and watches as it swirls to his right. Pot van to Janssen again. Pot van this time to LaFontaine. Pulling over was Trotje, but it's Potvan for a shot. He wanted the angle from Trotje, and Prop plays the bounce and clear. It's a good play by Samuelson, Mike, to keep Trotje from going to the net. That's exactly what happened. Dennis Potvan, you know he looks up before he shoots. He's been around long enough. He took a shot thinking Trotje was going to come to deflect it. It never materialized. Samuelson has really turned into a physical presence this year with the Flyers. The Forest attempt breaks down this time, but Ron Sutter, while falling, flung it into the Philadelphia bench. 43 seconds to go on the power play. As you see, the guy to have passed the 300 mark, nobody's ever done. He has 19 goals this year, 32 assists, and when I see those totals, I think, how does a guy his age that's going to retire at the end of the year have still have 19 goals? And I thought, I know, I'll check his plus minus to see what his minus is, because he has to have been on the ice for four goals again. Here's a look at Ron Sutter clearing the puck. So I look up the plus minus. Who's the leading Islander in plus minus? Dennis Potvin, plus 29. Alan Kerr, also plus 29. That's, a, that's a, an outstanding season. Kerr, uh, rather, uh, Potvin's defense partner, Thomas Janssen, has been boxed.
so both teams will be a man short for 43 seconds and barring further penalties that man's team will have its first power play of the evening. We'll tell you in advance should the Flyers get the power play. They've not been good on power plays this year. They are 16th out of 21 in the league but with Tim Kerr back they are nine power play goals in 24 attempts. That's about 40 percent. Moving with this is Crossman. Hands on for a toss by Huffman that is gloved by Makala. Makala with 25 seconds before his team goes shorthanded in comparison to the Flyers is sealed up by Huffman. Murray Craven, best year ever in pro hockey this year for Philadelphia. Hands on for Crossman. Gets it on to Sinasalo, but offside is called. Darn, 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 the whistle blew. Four on four. I don't get to see this, but a couple of times a year, and I, I was just about to say I rest my case. The play in the last 30 seconds went from one end to the other, and then from the flyer's end, sure, there was an offside, but obviously when you take two skaters away, it's a, it's a noticeable difference, and I just... Someday I wish I would wake up and read in the paper that the National Hockey League has decided to go back to... Uh, to when there are coincidental penalties, letting teams play one man short so that it does open up. It is so entertaining. You may have noticed that stat just now that showed that 19th out of the 21 teams in penalty killing the Islanders. But Bill emphasized how important it is to reach a crescendo down the stretch. And the Islanders have killed off 24 of their last 25 shorts, so they're gaining confidence in that area at just the right time. Absolutely. You have to look at the graph, and the graph has to be on the up curve. It has to be going up. That big mo, the big momentum has to be with you in all areas. Top nearly beat one through, but it is Eklund pointing to Samuelson. The power play is on now for Philadelphia. Howe, Samuelson, Eklund. To Howe. Prop is in front, but that one directed away by Tim Kerr. Interesting to watch, orange number 12, as he tries to shake free. He'll position himself either at the front of the side of the net. What he wants to do is just simply get away from Islanders and hope that his teammates can spot it at just the right time to feed to him. Because if they do, he has such quick hands, it's a one-time shot, usually on goal. Billy Smith paddles this one for the clear by Conroy. Twenty-four seconds to go on Philadelphia's power play. Game tied at one. A Sutter has scored for each team. Gilbert drives, but it is Samuelson to hold now. Carrie Huffman brings it toward Diddick. It's forced over to Prop. Turn toward Kerr. Diddick sizes him up. Eklund turns. Penalty time is up. Puck back for a drive by Huffman, and it got all the way through, but why? Johnson starts it back, fresh from the penalty box. Step from Crossman, but the pass is cut off by Doug Crossman, and on the wing, but off the stick of Kerr. Hot band chip, Crossman takes. Lays it back to Derek Smith. Taken to the wall by Pot band, and it's Derek King, the rookie, up with it. Now, this is a little more typical, I think, of what these two teams do, isn't it? In they, what sense? They go in deep. They try to play around the far side. Usually pucks are tipped right back. Then the next team attacks. The Islanders, in, in that case, were trying to make an attack. Well, really defensively oriented. It's defensive oriented, but the, the Islanders have been far more successful than the Flyers in getting the puck out of their own zone. I still haven't been able to figure out what type of forechecking system the Flyers have used or are using because... They haven't been able to sustain long enough to spot it. The Islanders are sending two men in. It's a 2-1-2 situation, and the two men are doing a great job that are leading the way for checking for the Islanders. Look out here. Mellonby and Alan Kerr may go. The play was offside, and Kerr followed through on his hit. We'll return. When wills call. Blue. And evening Blue evening heaven. Time. I heard it tonight. Elsewhere around the NHL tonight in Quebec City, it's still the Nordiques one and the Buffalo Sabres nothing early in the second period. Atlanta over Maryland. Washington still trails Detroit by a score of one to nothing. 
in the second period of play. And at East Rutherford, New Jersey, they're getting set to start the second period. No score between the Penguins and the New Jersey Devils. Let's get back to Nassau Coliseum now. Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement with the Flyers and Islanders tied at one. As we come back here, you notice the net to the left has been dislodged. That because of a collision that occurred after Mark LaForest tipped another good Islander shot away. 52 shots he faced on Friday night at Landover against the Capitals, and he was splendid. Anyone who watched the game called him the first star, even though his team yeah. lost. He has sure answered a huge question in anybody's mind that has anything to do with the Philadelphia Flyers, whether you watch them casually or with great interest. Nobody knew if the Philadelphia Flyers had anybody that could stop pucks. If anything happened to Ron Hextall and going into the playoffs, that is a huge question that you, you have to have answered in some capacity. I think LaForest has answered it in, in, the, in fine fashion for the Flyers. And I think it's probably an inopportune situation with Ron Hextall coming up with an injury that wasn't serious, but long enough to keep him out of the lineup to test LaForest. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, Calgary added a goaltender at the trading deadline. So did the Edmonton Oilers. And I'm not certain, really, if the question has been answered so solidly where Grant Fuhr continues to play quite a bit in Edmonton. And it might never have to be answered if, if uh, Mike Vernon or if a Grant Fuhr stays healthy. But should either one of those uh, either uh, end up injured or falter? Who knows? I mean, everybody's human. Uh, then the big question mark would fall right in between the post. And uh, it would be interesting to see what happened to either one of those teams. Pat LaFontaine credits his youth hockey program in the Detroit area with a great deal of the skill development that got him here. He said they didn't have us shooting and stick handling much at the first. They emphasized skating and skating and more skating. Sinisalo's shot is tipped away by Smith. LaFontaine's pass is to Alan Kerr. But this is Samuelson. Swooping toward him was King and it's given up to Alan Kerr, but the pass off the mark for LaFontaine. Sinisalo to Howe, headman over for Eklund. Eklund really battled all the way by Janssen. That was another one-on-one -on -one confrontation, not for a loose puck, but for possession. And you notice where Janssen was, right up at the blue line. He's an Islanders defenseman, so they're not backing up at all. They are forcing the play at the blue line. That's one of the reasons the Flyers have not been able to get the play in deep, Mike, and do any forechecking. The Islanders are playing an outstanding defensive game at their blue line. It was one mistake that cost them a goal early in the game, but other than that, real solid. Shell Samuelson scales one to take it as Croce. Pass is right on the money to Gilbert. Crossman is defending. Oh, save made by LaForest. Makala turns away from Huffman's initial check and then is wrapped up. Greg Gilbert throws one across the goal now. And it's Prop slugging it back ahead. He was hoping for Kerr, but instead it's Gerald Diddick banking one back in. Trotche pokes it away from Crossman in center. Makala shot, save, rebound, score! about one-on-one -on -one confrontation. The whole thing started with Nico Makala beating Terry Huffman on a one-on-one. -on -one. Makala moved in to help. There he is taking a shot on the forest. Greg Gilbert there, Doug Crossman, number three for the Flyers, and Terry Huffman, number five, completely turned around for some reason. Watch Doug Crossman right there, number three. Well, in Doug Crossman's defense, Mike, he was trying to stay out of the way of that shot so as not to squeeze Mark LaForest. He couldn't go in front of him to get position on the other side of the net, so he found himself out of position. But nevertheless, tenacity, drive by the Islanders. Ten turnovers so far by the Flyers in their zone, one by the Islanders in theirs. Here is a two-on-one. Basson shot, ricocheted off LaForest. He must have the feeling of another Washington shooting gallery tonight. Derek Smith tapped for Mellonby, came back to him, but is now controlled by Brad Marsh. And Bill Smith turns it over to Diddick. Islanders have continued to progress defensively. Bill mentioned they are fourth, but they weren't earlier. Gradually, their game is getting better. And if you sat down in August, 
took out a calendar and circled three weeks that you'd like to see it happen. They are the three weeks that the Islanders have been going on. And I, that's especially true, Mike, because of the parity in the Patrick division. If you were a team that was 30 points ahead of the team you were going to play in the playoffs, you could be on a down curve and still get by them because you would be that much better. In this case, it is crucial that teams be on the up curve in all areas of their game when the playoffs start. It's that tight. 55 seconds to go in this first period as Mark Howe flashes it. Craven is there, and Samuelson pinches. Ken Morrow reads it for the Islanders along to Wood. This one rolls just like in shuffleboard to the right spot. Doesn't cause an icing, just forces Philadelphia back. Shift change on while this occurs for the Islanders. Bill Smith steps out to swing it away. And it'll be Alan Kerr unmolested to center ice as the Flyers are changing too in the last 25 seconds. Whoa. What a hit! by Don Knockbauer, who's registered two big ones tonight. Well, he is the one flyer that is out for Bear tonight. You're right, that's the second giant-sized Major League crunch that he has laid out tonight. Alan Kerr loses to the checking of Howe and Hill. Dave Brown works it back in. Five seconds to go in the period. <laughs> 16,297. Like what they've seen so far. He has a goal, but doesn't. He has one and is satisfied for now. The Islanders 14. We've completed 20 minutes of action here from the Nassau County Veterans Memorial Coliseum with the score the New York Islanders 2, the Philadelphia Flyers 1. How y'all are? You know me, I've been cooking and eating real Cajun food longer than my belly stomach is wide, and that's a fact. So when I told you you're gonna like Cajun spice ruffled potato chips more better than them other Cajun potato chips, I'm not just whistling digs, you know. I'm singing you a Bayou Serenade, I guarantee. Mm -hmm. Only Cajun spice flavored Ruffles brand potato chips have those spicy Ruffles ridges, so the taste won't leave you flat. Oh, when the evening breeze oh, whispers through the tree. We go above and beyond just like you, above and beyond what we have to do, caring for what's special to you. I'm a Prudential representative, and what's really important to me when I go into someone's home is to help them save money on their homeowner's insurance, because I know I'm a homeowner too. Taking care to protect what's important to you. For 30 years, Bayliner owners have come back again and again. Because when you build as much value into every boat the way we do, no matter what size your first Bayliner is, your next boat will be a Bayliner too. Only bigger. No wonder we're the world's largest builder of pleasure boats. See your Bayliner dealer for boat, motor, and trailer packages starting as low as $49.95. Bayliner, one of the companies of Brunswick Corporation, sharing the heritage of being number one. Love in the 90s. It might be better than you think. I have a response of all the wisdom we live in. Talking all night. I had a response of all the wisdom we live in. No, Mr. Right. All the It's terribly, terribly. Very, very. Upper, upper. Like it, rusty. Upper, crusty. Have you, chérie? Your palace. Or mine. And welcome back to our NHL Tonight studios. I'm Tom Mees. Good first period of hockey from the Nassau Coliseum. After one period, the Islanders lead the Flyers 2-1. to one. The Islander goals by Brent Sutter and Greg Gilbert. The Flyer goal by Ron, Ron Sutter, the first goal of the game. And the Islanders answering with two of their own. Of course, uh, this game vital for both teams in their chase for first place in the Patrick Division. In just a moment, we'll be going to a game that's vital for the Devils and the Pittsburgh Penguins in their chase just to get into the playoffs. Of course, the other team involved in that chase, the New York Rangers, have the night off. They'll be going against the Chicago Blackhawks tomorrow night at Chicago Stadium. Five games tonight, all told in the National Hockey League. Four of them underway. The only game that's not underway will be much later tonight at 10.30 Eastern Time start as the Winnipeg Jets skate against the Vancouver Canucks in a game that, uh, frankly, means nothing because both teams uh, know where they're going. Vancouver's going golfing, and Winnipeg will be in the playoffs. Now it's time for our Dodge Performer of the Week. None other than big number 66 of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Mario Lemieux, who has carried this team on his back the last uh, week to 10 days. 
Look at this goal, just last Sunday night against the Quebec Nordiques, typifies the effort and, yes, the talent, the awesome talent of Mario Lemieux. In the week, five goals, eight assists in just three games. He's going to win the scoring title, and he will stop Wayne Gretzky from winning the scoring title for an eighth straight years. Gretzky has seven in a row, but he won't get it this year. We understand that in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the Devils have just scored to take a one nothing lead. Tom Kerber's with that goal. We're going to go live now to Brendan Byrne Arena in East Rutherford, and we're going to show you the live replay of this goal by Tom Kerbers. I understand that Paul Steigerwald and Mike Lang are standing by to fill us in on this game, which is early in the second period of play. Of course, the Devils come in trailing the Penguins and the Rangers by three points. So obviously a victory tonight, and the New Jersey Devils should be into the playoff chase right down to the nub, right down to Sunday when the season ends. So our scores now, New Jersey 1 and Pittsburgh nothing. Without further ado, let's go live to East Rutherford, New Jersey. Let's take a look at the goal. Tom Kerbers, this is Kirk Muller of New Jersey with the puck. Centering pass in the slot to Tom Kerbers. He was covered there from behind by the defenseman Bodger, but it didn't do uh, Bodger or the Penguins any good. So Tom Kerbers, the former Montreal Canadian, now playing for the New Jersey Devils, has given the Devils uh, a lead of one to nothing. That is in the second period of play. And I understand, are we still going live to East Rutherford, New Jersey? Yes, we are. East Rutherford. That's the live shot of the second period. Let's join now some of the play-by-play, -play, Mike Lang and Paul Steigerwald. We are at the Brendan Byrne Arena where the Penguins trail the New Jersey Devils one to nothing. The Devils fighting for their lives for a playoff spot in the Patrick Division. The Penguins currently tied with the Rangers with 77 points. The Devils just scoring as Kerber's connected on his fifth of the year on a pretty set up play by Kirk Muller of the Devils. And that goal came in 446. Now the Penguins trying to answer the challenge here before a pretty large crowd at the Brendan Byrne Arena. The Devils realizing Paul we've talked about it all night long is the fact that they've really got to win almost all four games and they're off to a one nothing lead here in the second. And I really think that the, the fact that the Devils were able to keep the Penguins off the board in the first period was an advantage to them because they seem to come out be a little bit nervous when the game started. And you can expect that with this big crowd here, a sellout crowd at home and the importance of the game. That they uh, have controlled the tempo here in the second period and they took advantage of a Penguin mistake, a giveaway by Zarly Zalapsky. Not a really bad giveaway, but nevertheless, he turned it over to Kirk Muller, and he moved it to the net, and Kerbers, anticipating well, went in and scored the goal. And Kerbers came into this game with 10 points in his last eight games. He's played an important part in the Devils' uh, offensive display here in the recent weeks. Paul Coffey on the ice for the Penguins. He uh, hurt his ankle in the first period, went off the ice with about two minutes to go, but he's back on here in the second. One of the keys of the game has been the goaltending so far of Sean Burke. Steve Gannett has also played well on the net for the Penguins. But the Penguins are 0 for 4 in the power play so far, and that's been their big high point here over their rush towards a playoff spot of late. But the Devils have shut them down. Well, Lannon from the faceoff controls the puck, and he'll lead it ahead to Claude Lucelle. Devils center iceman checking against Lemieux tonight and pushed up into the Penguins' end. Lemieux has been pretty quiet. He did have an opportunity in a shorthanded attempt. And he's been red hot in that department. Now Lemieux with the puck. Backdoor pass left side to Randy Cunningworth. Coming up towards the Devils' line, shut down by Will Lannon, the Devils' defenseman. And the Penguins have to regroup at center. Coffee looking for Randy Cunnyworth. Near side pass to Billy Siren. And Billy Siren comes near wing to the Devils line. Lost it to Ken Danico. And Danico just slides it back to center. The Penguins regroup and set up shop one more time. Here's Coffee's lead pass intended for Lemieux. Lemieux yelled at the linesman, no offside. He was right, but the puck goes in behind the net. And the Devils have it. And worked off the sideboards back to center. Randy Hillier is going to throw it into the Devils' right wing corner. Well, land him back with Robbie Brown putting pressure on him. He'll dump it off to Kirk Muller. Doug Sullivan has it. Goes rink wide. A dangerous pass there, but it comes to Wallanen. And Wallanen relays a right wing pass to John McClain. 1 nothing New Jersey. 13 40 left in the second period. A long shot by McClain. Gannett went down to one knee to stop it. And Hillier carries a rebound back to center. Penguin defenseman Randy Hillier into the Devils territory. He is pulled down on the play. And the puck is lifted back to the Penguin line. Jimmy Johnson inside his own stripe. Goes left side to Kevin Stevens, a rookie from the U.S. Olympic team. And pushed away to the Penguin goal where Gannett turns it over to Jimmy Johnson. Now an outlet pass too far for Kevin Stevens. Goes to the Devils in. Driver's going to clear it over the glass and right up into the seat. New Jersey won and Pittsburgh nothing. Second period with 13-12 left. Back in a moment on the Penguins Hockey Network. And we thank Mike Lang and Paul Steigerwald for that update of the Devils on the Kerber's goal leading the Penguins 1-0 in the second period. From Long Island, it's the Islanders 2, the Flyers 1. This is the NHL tonight. For 
so long I've done my best I've been strong When the road seemed impossible I kept right on Nothing stopped me then With you and me together now I'll try my special dream needs a special financial performance, come to Pittsburgh National. We'll give you more loan choices than any other bank in town. My wildest dreams, anything can happen now that I'm oh, anything can happen. Pride in performance, we built a bank on it. Pittsburgh National. A goalie counts on his defenseman to keep the net clear and give him a good view of the puck. That's team hockey. I'm Lou Nanny, and 400,000 Americans with retinitis pigmentosa, RP, also get help from a team. The RP Foundation Fighting Blindness. They're researching for the cause, treatment, and prevention of this hereditary eye disease. We are counting on the RP team because saving sight is one of the greatest saves you can make. Lead as they seek to keep their playoff hopes alive. Let's go back to the battle for first place in Unidale. Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. Power play is on on the hold by Basson. The time of the hold was 10.59. 15 seconds have gone on the power play. Mark Howe moves it back up ice to Eklund. Fangs it in, hoping for the carom to prop. Shouldered by Conroy. Norton, but it's poked to Howe. Mark Howe's play is to prop. Looks it back to Howe, slides to Samuelson, but back to center ice. Eklund dishes to Prop. Speed for Eklund, but it's taken by Tim Kerr. Around a trap for Howe. Kerr at the front, being dealt with now by Norton. Eklund looks for Samuelson, spins one in front, backhander off Smith. He gathers and holds on. It's great for a guy like Brian Prop to try and sneak in there behind because you know everybody's thinking about this guy, number 12, Tim Kerr. Prop is in front, Kerr is in front. Conroy, 33, has Kerr tied up, but in behind him, there's Brian Prop, number 26, hammering away at Billy Smith. All the goaltenders will admit you are conscious of Tim Kerr's presence on the ice. I don't think anyone... Uh, I, I read a, a comment by Clint Malarchuk about it. Billy Smith today said the same thing. Every goaltender knows when Tim Kerr is on the ice stationed in front of him. And it's a distraction. You have to concentrate to maintain that focus on what's happening out there. Kerr wins the faceoff to Samuelson. Ilka Sinisalo. Kerr at the front. Now to Samuelson. Sinisalo again. Craven is near the front as well. Takes the pass from Sinisalo. Samuelson, a one-timer, tips away. As they tried for the deflection, but failed. Strom, apparently nowhere to go, now is able to move ahead. Trache's shot is snagged by LaForest. Half a minute to go on Philadelphia's power play. Sinisalo works it over to Samuelson. Gets away from the stick check of Trache. Fed back on to Kerr. Howe and Samuelson tried the ricochet for Kerr, but just too stiff to handle, and it's clear. Second Philadelphia power play of the game. They were 0 for the previous one, and are five seconds away from being 0 for 2. Deliberately played over to, Hoff, uh, to Huffman. Broken down by Diddick, and turned back. Penalty time is up. Samuelson in deep. And Billy Smith to stop. This is Conroy on to Thomas Johnson. Lays this one in for Brent Sutter. The forest just by Sutter. Huffman connects with Ron Sutter. Too far for Dave Brown. But he takes care of Norton, who has to recover his tenses and move it back up. Six and a half to go, second period. One shot in that minute five for Philadelphia. Right, not bad, not bad attack zone time. They're up around the 50% mark, which they have to be. One shot, hardly enough. That one clicked off Derek King and went down deep. Dave Brown, who has an assist in the game tonight, on that tie-breaking goal by Derek Smith, 
was able to stir things up, and now it's Crossman trying one behind. Norton checked by Al Hill. Brown is in trying to work it to Eklund and does. Morrow presses him. Hill moves in, but it's punched back away by Pat LaFontaine. Norton took the check from Hill, but released it to Alan Kerr. Moving on Crossman and a rising shot off the glass. LaFontaine to Alan Kerr. Crossman flicked that away. LaFontaine ridden by Crossman and steers one in, and LaForest says, let's hold it. And let's hold it here with 5.33 to go in the second. Philadelphia by one. Round of lights here. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Let me know when you're ready for another round. How to shave a giant. Avoid big trouble. Use the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. It's got the Lubra Smooth Strip. So the comfortable shave for a giant is... This little guy. Good News Plus. From Gillette. After tonight, only five nights of action left in the NHL. The league has 21 teams. 20 are still in the running for the 16 playoff berth. You're seeing two of them. That one off Wood ricocheted just away from Henry and drew a big wall from the crowd. <laughs> Here is Prop. Moving along with Tim Kerr. Prop with a quick shot, and Billy Smith just that quick with a stick. Rebound. Scooted away by Prop on the back end and fed quickly for a drive by Greg Smith that Billy Smith was able to answer. Ahead with this comes Wood. Turns it over to Henry. Drops it off to Wood. Has a man in the slotted pot van. Difficult pass for him. And it's Poulin. Shoveling one that Diddick has trouble with. Muscled a bit by Kerr, but the puck bounces the Islanders' way. Sutter with an offside play. Henry was in early. 4.46 to go in the second. Philadelphia ahead by one. stand up to heavy traffic. Mike Keenan studying this one as we continue to think about 16 shots for New Jersey and two for Pittsburgh in the second period of their game at the Meadowlands. And oh man. Now the game isn't over yet, but here's a thought. A little brain candy for you. Since the Devils moved to New Jersey, they have a winning record on the road in only one arena. This year, they are perfect in two games at that arena, and it's the one where they'll be to play the Penguins Thursday night. Mark Howe sails it down. This will be an icing touch-up. Puck sent over the center and end red lines and touched by the defending team. Well... There is some noise here tonight. How many sellouts did you say in the first period this building has seen this year? Six? Is this the number? Six out of 39. This is number six tonight. Maybe we can follow up on that curiously small number after we go to Tom Mees for some other numbers, Tom. All right, Mike. We do have some other numbers from the Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland. Number 32 in red, white, and blue is Dale Hunter. The Washington Capitals gets a nice centering pass, beats... Greg Steffen to the punch and ties the game in the third period. Detroit, Washington tied it two in a big one. Let's go back to another big one on Long Island. Offside called against the Islanders. You're mentioning only six sellouts. Four have come with the Rangers, the opposition. One Edmonton and tonight Philadelphia. I, I think it's a shame. Obviously, the demographics are here to support a team. The Islanders have been here since 1972. But... I mean, I, I think that a lot of people who live around here should be ashamed. This is a darn good hockey team that has been here all year. I don't know what everybody's waiting for. Only six sellouts. You know, it, if the New York Islanders moved to another city, 
I wouldn't regret it one bit for the people in this area. When you only have six sellouts in a hockey season with a team like the New York Islanders, you should be ashamed. A penalty coming up. This will be against the Islanders, and the Flyers will get a, their third power play of the game. They have the lead. You're never too old, you're never too young. There's a daily treat for everyone. Fresh fruit flavors as good as can be. Loaded with tons of vitamin C. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, Hades has a flavor just right for you. And what are you waiting for? Who could the servant for? Treat yourself to the fun. There's a daily treat for everyone. Johnson for holding with three minutes and 56 seconds to go in the second period of play. Home crowd a little quieter now. Their team trailing in the game by one and facing the third Philadelphia power play. Let's try and keep our eyes on Tim Kerr, number 12 for the Flyers. He will be in and out of that box, moving, trying to get open. Shell Samuelson is the one flyer in back as Brian Fropp controls it from the faceoff. Eklund moves to the front with Kerr, puck to the back, Samuelson, then over to Mark Howe. Croce menacing Samuelson, who passes to Fropp. Kerr being tipped and edged in the front of the net by Ken Morrow. Fropp gives back to Eklund. Wow, see Billy Smith swinging? <laughs> he, was, he, he took his stick and moved his hand all the way to the knob and was swinging behind the net trying to knock it off of Pelly Eklund stick. In that specialty of staying in his crease but reaching outside it and over the end line, he's the best. Yeah, he is. But if you can read it, Mike, see, once he commits with his arm around the net, he's really vulnerable on the other side of the net. And if he doesn't have a defenseman over there, if you're quick enough, you can wheel out the other side and catch him. Tim Kerr will watch for that if the Flyers do move a guy behind. Drive. Ricochet and Kerr is back there to play it. Along the prop. As Terry Huffman has come out to work the left point. Tim Kerr back to Huffman. His drive off Smith. He's looking for it. Samuelson over to Huffman. Deals it over to Prop. Big Tim Kerr at the front. Drop a shot went wide. Samuelson unable to control. 35 seconds left on the power play. 2.25 to go in the second. Tom Meese during the intermission with our Patrick Division and Adams Division spectacular of highlights tonight. The Islanders force the Flyers back. Ship change on for the penalty killers as a pass misses for Crossman. But the first one there is Sinisalo, so there'll be no icing. Craven nudges to Mellonby. Checked by Potvan. Feeds it on a cross and bringing it back out is Greg Gilbert. Penalty time is up as of right now. 1.55 left in the second. Philadelphia 3-2 ahead of the Islanders after trailing 2-1 at the end of the first and being outplayed. We'll probably see a decent attack zone time by the Flyers, but they only had one good shot. That was from the point by Kerry Huffman. All in all, very good job by the Islanders of killing that one off. LaFontaine and King with a shot on the rebound that's popped over the net. King in front, backhander answered by LaForest. LaFontaine keeps, sets it up for Merkula's shot that's wide. Sinisalo clears. Well, there wasn't much attack at that end for a while, but when it came, it was in quality and in a cluster. LaFontaine on that move in, he looked one way and shot. Didn't even look at the net as he let it go. That's the key, look east, shoot west. <laughs> he didn't get that one through. There's the chance by Derek King. You know, LaForest made an outstanding recovery even to get back over there. It was deflected over the net. There's Derek King. But LaForest has shown me absolutely no weakness tonight. He has been strong for the Flyers. Here's King again, just chipping this one in. He wasn't able to get much wood on it, but that's LaFontaine in white for the Islanders that was swooping around the side of the net trying to pick up the... Uh, the rebound. There's the attack zone time. That's that's healthy. Up to a minute, 20 seconds. That's healthy. They only had the one shot. What a battle. Ron Sutter and LaFontaine. Marsh clears. Conroy drives back in. 
LaForest sets it up for Shell Samuelson to drive, and Makala right there waiting. Makala with a little backhander. Puck poked out, and LaFontaine shot is blocked. Another shot by Makala off the mark. And the puck cleared out of play. Boy, when it comes, it's in clusters. When Makala doesn't panic, I'll tell you when he gets in a, in a tricky situation. And there is the situation that has everybody on the edges of their seats in the Packery division. Check it out. Islanders in first by one. The Flyers are in third, only three points back. And in the bottom three, ten points separating six teams, top to bottom. We've no idea where we'll be on Sunday. That decision will be made when the standings are viewed later this week. And they are ever changing. We don't know where we'll be. We know we'll be wearing these funny things that fit on our ears with these microphones that come around in front of us, but uh, we're not sure what city they'll be in. Morrow bounces. Samuelson drives and LaFontaine is there for Makala. Direct to Morrow. Save LaForest. And Mark Howe able to recover a difficult puck. Half a minute to go in the second period of play. We've really seen two different games. Islanders dominate in the first, the Flyers come back in the second, and now they seem to be going at each other hammer and tong, as well, you would expect. There, there's the difference, that man right there. And a kid asked me before the game tonight, a fan, youngster in the crowd, said, who's going to win tonight? And I looked at him and I started to think. And I said, kidding, I said, a tie. And then I started to think, if I had to, to try and pick, I would probably pick a tie. And then I thought, it will probably go down to who plays best in goal tonight. I felt that it would be that even, that type of a struggle coming in. The forest has been tremendous. Ron Sutter's pass goes by Derek Smith. Diddick down for an icing touch-up. Now, you mentioned a tie. If there are ties for any position in the standings after Sunday's action, the tiebreakers in order, if they're tied in points, would be most wins. If still tied, most points in the season series between the two teams. If you're interested in Pittsburgh and the Rangers, for example, Pittsburgh won the season series three games to two with two ties. That's how close this can get. And if they're still tied in the season series, they go by regular season goal differential. The best positive of goals for minus goals against. And if you get down to the eighth tiebreaker, it's the team that has the most number of players' wives with names that have three syllables or more. <laughs> and, and the ninth tiebreak, well, we'll get to that in the third period. You know, in the American League at one time, there were seven tiebreakers. They had never gotten through any further than fourth. But the seventh one was a coin toss. You gotta love it, the old coin toss. Hey, that's how football games are started. That's how hockey seasons are ended, with a coin toss. And Sinisalo clears. There'll be another icing as Diddick hustles back in the last 10 seconds of this period. Billy Smith was in goal for a season-end one-game knockout series when he was with Springfield against the Quebec Aces. You shake your head, Bill yeah. Clement, with a little bit of pain. Well, I played in that hockey game. It was a sudden-death game to decide who went on to the playoffs. Springfield against Quebec. Butch Goring scored the winning goal in overtime to beat us in Quebec, uh, which is the Flyers farm team in the American League that year. Billy Smith was in goal. Should I ask where you were at the time the winner was scored? I think you know the answer to that. I, I was, uh, I, I broke my ankle and four fractures of my cheekbone after three minutes. I was, how, how should I say this? I was taken out. Somebody took me out. Brent Sutter in front, denied by Mark Howe. Two seconds to go as Janssen hurries one. Offside would have negated it anyway, but the horn is sound to end the second period of action. What a night in the NHL. Here at Uniondale, Long Island, it's the Flyers 3 and the New York Islanders 2. Leave it to the good hands, people. Compassion. You can't teach it or place too great a value on it. But you can measure it down this very road on the morning of June 23rd. In the actions of Allstate Claims Adjuster Don Mulder, who at 5 a.m. drove 60 miles to a fire site, all just to shorten the distance between a man's loss and a man's recovery. People like Don Mulder, another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. Presenting the Seagram Slam Dunk Minute. Rick Barry. 
one of basketball's best. He's among the career leaders in just about every offensive category. However, there is one key shot in the game, a clutch shot, in which Barry is the undisputed king. What major shooting title does Rick Barry hold? I'm very proud about the fact that I have the career record as far as free throws go because I really put the time and the effort in. I mean, after all, it's the only opportunity that you have in a game where somebody's not defending you and you have a chance to score points. So why in the world would you want to practice till you get to the point that you're going to be able to make it as many times as possible? So that's what I, I realized and I worked at it till I got to the point that I could excel at it. And that's what the game is all about, to be able to achieve a level of of performance within a team concept and to be able to win while doing that is the ultimate achievement. The Seagram Slam Dunk Minute. When the heat's on, motor oil viscosity can break down. To help keep your engine cool, trust Haviland Supreme. The motor oil is cool under fire. Haviland's viscosity booster helps protect engines against wear under extreme heat and stress. Up ahead. Haviland Supreme, cool under fire. Start the American road. Welcome back to the NHL Tonight Studios, everyone. I'm Tom Mees. Two goals for the Philadelphia Flyers in the second period. They'll take a 3-2 lead over the Islanders in the third period of play. Meanwhile, tonight in Quebec City, 31-year-old Mark Napier of the Buffalo Sabres is playing like a rookie. I say that because he scored two important goals for the Sabres in the second period to give them a 3-1 lead. We'll take a look at the most recent. Happened just a few moments ago. Cruising into the Quebec zone, the shot by Napier, eluding Mario Brunetta, and uh, that made it 3-1, to one, Buffalo on top of the Quebec Nordiques. And for a live report on this game, let's go live to the Colisee, Ted Darling and Mike Robitaille. Gentlemen. Now Gillis goes after it. Gillis comes up with it. Bends it out in front, a high pass, and Natty Shack could not get to it. No, Riki missed it at the line. That allows Gillis to drop it back, going right in and go back and drop to the next to save Riki. Knocked it away. There will be a penalty going here to the Buffalo Sabres. And you're watching Sabres Hockey on TV 49. And also on ESPN, the Sabres leading the Nordiques by a score of 3-1. to one. The Devils lead the Penguins 4 nothing. Here's Mike Lang. The New Jersey Devils with a 4 nothing lead now. They've just picked up their second power play goal on a score by Kirk Muller. He was credited with a goal. He pass across for Pat Verbeek at the edge of the crease, but Zarni Zalapski, the Penguin rookie defenseman, deflected it into his own net, and the Devils have now taken command of the game even more so, and they have a 4-0 lead. They can try and close the gap within one in the Patrick Division race for fourth place. They trail the Penguins and the Rangers by three, and they've got a 4-0 lead here. Now Vanny Belichick, the Devils defenseman, slides it away to the Penguin right-wing corner, and since the second period began, it's been all New Jersey. Billy Searett. Flip a pass ahead to Dan Quinn, the center iceman, and he'll drop it into the Devils' left wing corner. Loney goes in, overskated the play, and the Devils, Doug Brown now, winds it ahead. Well, New Jersey 4 and 1 against the Penguins this year, and they've got a big rematch coming up on Thursday night at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Here's Coffey trying to get in. He is pulled down by Velaschek, and play will continue. And the Devils, Joe Cirilla. Tap it around the right wing. The Devils cannot get it out. Dan Quinn with pressure. Looking for Troy Loney. Instead goes to Dan Farley in front of Looney and a backhander. And Sean Burke, who has just been superb here tonight for the Devils, makes the stop on Loney, and it's cleared away back into the Penguin zone. He robbed Mario Lemieux early in this third period on a big shot from about 15 feet away, taking it for the upper corner, but Burke got the glove hand up. Also stopped him on a number of other occasions here in this game. At center, Kirk Muller. He is belted on the boards by Randy Cunningworth. And turned around, and now Mario Lemieux gains possession. Lemieux with a biscuit. Sent it ahead now to Cunningworth. But the Devils line fakes a shot. Moves in. Drop pass to Bodger, but he is very well covered. He'll fire it around the horn. It comes right point to Robbie Brown. Cunningworth now takes the pass. As Zalamski shoots it. Blocked in front for the Devils. And Bruce Driver plays it back to center. Aaron Brighton up to Muller. He's had a great night tonight. Muller in front's got Verbeek. Verbeek shoots, and Cadet will make the save with his right pad. And Verbeek, and another great pass by Kirk Muller. Boy, he's done it all tonight for the Devils. Muller and Lemieux, of course, 1-2 in the 84 draft. Lemieux number one and Muller number two. Zalapski played around to the near side of the Penguin zone. And Pat Verbeek, and tonight the night belongs to Kirk Muller. And Muller again with the puck. Number nine drops it in. The Devils go to a line change. The Penguins with 15.50 to go in the third period trail here at New Jersey, 4-0. 
So Kirk Muller with one goal and two assists so far, and unless the Devils suffer a complete collapse on home ice, they'll go on and win tonight. They lead the Penguins four to nothing. Let's show you that fourth goal credited to Muller. Now Kirk Muller, who wears number nine, will get the puck eventually for the New Jersey Devils. There he is. Now he'll just try and center it. He's looking for Pat Verbeek, but it hits the skate of uh, Pittsburgh defenseman Zarly Zalapski, inadvertently caroms into the Pittsburgh net, but Muller will take it, and the Devils lead it four to nothing. Should that score hold up, they would trail both the Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins by only one point for the fourth and final playoff spot in the Patrick Division, and those two clubs will meet in Pittsburgh on Thursday night. We'll be back in a moment. When it comes to insurance for the home, auto, business, life, or health, talk to the experts at the Altani Insurance Agency in Brackenridge. Because we care about our customers, we provide only quality coverage and expert service. For years, we've offered good protection at affordable prices. The same is true today. The Altani Insurance Agency, Brackenridge Avenue in Brackenridge. Service is our trademark. From Neil Simon's Tony Award-winning play. What would you do if the Japanese army was behind you? Surrender and get some sleep. A Raystar production of a Mike Nichols film. You come to Mama night. Would it be okay if we didn't use the word Mama? Matthew Broderick. Christopher Walken. Guess we have to look for another way around, man. Neil Simon's Biloxi Blues. Rated PG-13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. to get serious. Battle lines are drawn for the NHL's Cold War. ESPN presents the Stanley Cup Playoffs. All live, all the way to the championship finals as teams take their shots at the defending champion Edmonton Oilers. The showdown heats up. The Stanley Cup Playoffs beginning April 6th here on ESPN. It is 3-2 Philadelphia over the Islanders after two periods on our main telecast tonight in the National Hockey League tonight. But now let's go live to the Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland. Washington 2, Detroit 2. Here's an update from Mike Florin. We welcome our viewers from ESPN. We've got a 2-2 tie between the Capitals and the Red Wings. Here's Sharples for Detroit back to his own line. He tosses it into the Washington zone. Scott Stevens over to the corner after it, and as he picks it up, icing is the call. The lone scoring play here in the third period, Dale Hunter on a power play, his 20th goal of the year that has tied this game. Barr scored for Detroit back in the first period, Oates for Detroit in the second period, and Dave Christian scoring for Washington. Also, with an extra man situation, the Capitals using both power play situations to get their goals. Bob Probert has been in a fight tonight, one with Ivan Korobo, 386 now the total in penalty minutes. We talked about before trying to become the first player with 30 goals and over 300 minutes in penalties, and obviously about to become the first player with 30 goals and over 400 minutes in penalties right now, sits in the goal department with 28. Tremendous improvement over his skating and puck handling ability over the last few years. No longer just only a tough guy, he's got that offensive skill as well. Thrown behind the net now for Higgins and played up the sideboard. Miller reaches in with his stick. Gets bonked right on the top of the helmet now by Sharples. The puck set in front. Here's a shot. Blocked. Cleared away from in front of the goal. At the right point. Murphy hustles to keep it in. Now we've got Ridley tied up with Snepp at the side of the net. Play has been called. The Detroit goal has been pushed off its magnetic luring. Now Pavonka comes in and has something to say to Higgins. They push and shove. And Ridley, still the man in there who's trying to get at Higgins, is being restrained. 
Well, tempers are flaring at the Capitol Center. Let's quickly go to the Coliseum in Quebec City. The Nordiques on a three-minute power play, trailing the Buffalo Sabres 3-1. to one. Here's Ted Darling and Mike Robitaille. Quebec zone, Housley steps onto the ice. And the team's now with four skaters, but in 45 seconds, the Nordiques will go back again to the power play. It'll be their 12th of the game. Here's Brutu chasing the puck deep into the Quebec zone. He's knocked out. The Nordiques will bring it back. Let by Anton Stasny. Oh, there's Brutu and Bowler at the other end. Finally, they separate. Anton Stasny goes into the corner. Back in behind the net with it. Now Peter Stasny and Smith begin to shove. That wouldn't be a bad idea right there. That certainly Brutu. would be in Buffalo's favor somehow if they could get Stasny off the ice. See, Moeller comes in. He pitch forks someone with a stick. Now Rutu will go back at him, takes a shove. Not much will happen. Peter Stastny showing a lot of restraint right there. His team trailing the Buffalo Sabres 3-1. to one. If Quebec loses this game, they're out of the playoffs for the first time since their first year in the National Hockey League back in 79. Our score after two. Flyers three, Islanders two. Back in a moment. Remember a time, a time when the only thing you could think of was getting a pet of your very own. Remember? Petland, experts at matching people with pets. Come to Petland and discover the wonders. Now open in the Waterworks Mall, Freeport Road. should give you some idea of the difference between beer and Genesee Cream Ale. Smooth Genesee Cream Ale. It's not the same old... A goalie counts on his defenseman to keep the net clear and give him a good view of the puck. That's team hockey. I'm Lou Nanny, and 400,000 Americans with retinitis pigmentosa, RP, also get help from a team. The RP Foundation Fighting Blindness. They're researching for the cause, treatment, and prevention of this hereditary eye disease. We are counting on the RP team because saving sight is one of the greatest saves you can make. For more information, call 1-800-638-2300. And the NHL Tonight continues. I'm Tom Mees. Your studio host will be getting back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement at the Nassau Coliseum in a moment. Right now, it's time for the Prudential Scoreboard in our second intermission. And let's recap starting in Quebec where the Nordiques are trying to stay alive in their slim hopes for a playoff spot taking on the Buffalo Sabres in an Adams Division battle. Second period, 1-0 Quebec. Buffalo power play, Lindy Ruff will get the pass here and one time it toward the net. The puck deflects off his teammate John Tucker into the goal and that ties the game at one. Second period, Buffalo shorthanded. Doug Smith and Terry Kartner battling for the puck. Smith scoots the puck over to Mark Napier. Smith was on his stomach when he made the pass. Napier goes to the backhand and beats the goaltender Brunetta 2-1 to Buffalo. Then later on in the second, Mark Napier streaks down the ice, uses Robert Picard as a screen, and rockets one past Brunetta late in the, rather actually down the third period of play. Buffalo leading Quebec 3-1. to Quebec loses that game. They're out of the playoff chase, period. Elsewhere around the NHL, Detroit and Washington 2-2 in the third period. Also, Pittsburgh now trailing New Jersey 4 to nothing in the third period of play. And, of course, later on it'll be Vancouver hosting Winnipeg. That's a 10.30 Eastern time start. Our score after two periods of play, it's the Philadelphia Flyers 3, the New York Islanders 2. The NHL tonight continues with a third period in just a moment. If you can dream it, you can do it. Today, the Prudential can show you a new world of financial opportunities. Look to the rock for mutual funds, stocks and bonds. Feel its strength in CDs, insurance and mortgages. With the right choices, the right guidance, the sky's the limit. The Prudential. Your rock in financial services. Who do you call to defeat the heat? Call me Reem. Reem is marching through the neighborhoods of America. Call me Reem. To defeat the heat on the home front. 
Your Rheem dealer has the heat pump you need to keep cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and save money year-round. Call him fast. Call him reliable. But call him. Call me Rheem. Your Rheem dealer is in the yellow pages. Call him to defeat the heat. How to shave an angel. For heaven's sake, use the Gillette Good News Plus disposable. It's got the Lubra Smooth Strip, so the comfortable shave for an angel is... This little devil. Good News Plus, from Gillette. When I'm stuffed up, I want relief, fast! Neosinephrine starts working in a neosecond. A neosecond? I like that. Today, nothing works faster to get you breathing. Breathing? I like that. Neosinephrine, relief in a neosecond. Love in the 90s. It might be better than you think. I have a spot of all Talking all night. I had a spot of Harvey We're so creative Mr. Right Harvey's Bristol Cream It's terribly, terribly Very, very Upper, upper Like it, rusty Upper, crusty Harvey, chérie Your palace Or mine Underway here in the third period Don't right, worry, right. you haven't missed a thing Three to two in favor of Philadelphia Thomas Johnson lays it ahead for Henry, and down it goes for Mark LaForest to move out and swing along. Henry there, duels with Mark Howe. Feeds to Brent Sutter, and a shot is tipped to the glass. Conroy banks it behind, wanting Wood. Good check there by Huffman, and the loose puck scooped over toward Howe. Wood turns, leaned on by Captain Dave Poole, and the loose puck tips, they score! The game is tied! Nothing more than hard work. Big, hard work. Randy Wood, with Dave Poulin trying to check him, you gotta remember, Dave Poulin is one of the strongest players in the Flyers team, and one of their best defensively. There's Wood, there is Poulin working on him. He's leaning on him, pushing, Wood turns, and then there's another one-on-one -on -one situation in front. It's Dale Henry and Mark Howe. Dale Henry's able to get enough Wood on it just to get it by Mark LaForest on the long side. Here's Wood doing his work, passes it out, and Henry redirects it immediately. Mark LaForest didn't have a chance to react to it. I wonder if we're back to the way the, the first period uh, started off and, and stays. The New York Islanders dominant. There's an offside call, but the Islanders dominant in the flyer zone. That's how the Islanders were successful, Mike, in the first period, was winning the one-on-one -on -one situations at the flyer's end. Well, you can never count anything, including that New Jersey-Pittsburgh game out, because so much can happen in an intermission count. You bet. That's Dale Henry's fifth goal. He's a forward. That's not a lot of goals, folks. Five goals. But when you get to this stage of the year, the teams invariably that are successful are the teams that start getting goals, and even in the playoffs, it's the same. They start getting goals from unsuspected sources. Dale Henry would have to fall into that category. It is Ken Morrow with a pass that missed for Alan Kerr and goes on LaForest. Norton moves back in for the Islanders. Checked from behind by Eklund. Tries to fight it off and then is crunched to the boards and glass by Samuelson. Big shell Samuelson. His team began the period ahead, but now sees the game tied. The hard around comes to Eklund. LaFontaine was able to work it away. Held for a shot by Mark. And Smith had to handle that one. Sinisalo just knocked down. There'll be a penalty coming up to Alan Kerr. Game tied at three. That could change. Power play coming up for Philadelphia. And in the goal for the United States, Bud Light's own Spuds McKenzie. celebrates with Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. This Bud Light is out of sight, my little Spudsky. The NHL tonight is being brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by the 1988 German-engineered Volkswagen and your Volkswagen dealer.
and by Wiser Bolt from Wiser Lock. The lock, the doors, love. You gotta love this hockey. Let's go back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. Brent Sutter and Wood, the assists on Henry's fifth. The penalty to Kerr for cross-checking at 224. That's Alan Kerr of the Islanders. LaForest with a little trouble. Still can very calmly swing it back along. Just missed for Ekman with his pass. Janssen to Diddick. And Diddick drills it down. Janssen is a defenseman who is playing up at the forward position. Brent Sutter has come to the bench for the shorthanded Islanders. And Trache is out. Now Janssen will be replaced by Krom. On comes Samuelson. Gloved by Potvin and scooped out. A minute 20 to go on the power play. Just under 17 minutes to go third period. The Islanders led 2-1 to one at the end of one. The Flyers were ahead 3-2 after two. And Henry's fifth at 124 has put us right back where we started at 8 o'clock Eastern time. What a chance for the Islanders right there. Dennis Potman didn't see that it was Rich Crom coming to pick it up, and he slashed him. All he saw was a stick. He ended up taking the puck away from his own player. Huffman flips. Prop takes. Has Crossman. Prop the one-timer. Held by Billy Smith. They'll have a night for him here on Thursday. Yesterday, the sports writers presented him with a jersey. They said that the team would probably retire his jersey someday, but they handed Dennis Potvin a jersey and said, we apologize for all the comparisons we made over the years between you and Bobby Orr. Potvin opened up the jersey. It had an Islanders crest on the front and on the back a gold number four. <laughs> That was Orr's number for those spectacular years in Boston. As prop shot is locked down. Back up with it comes Brent Sutter. Crossman watching. Sutter crosses. And then deals it behind. That chews up some more time. 25 seconds to go on the power play. 16 minutes to go in the third of a 3-3 tie here at the Nassau Coliseum. Tom Meese is keeping you updated on all the other actions. All of it important at two-on-one. Trotche with Johnson. Crossman to defend. Huffman trying to get back. The shot wide by Trotche. Now the Flyers have a three-on-two. Brian Prop brings it in. Gives to Craven. A shot is tipped away by Smith. Johnson can't clear out. Marsh with a drive that's across the goal mouth wide. Out of the box comes Alan Kerr. Brad Marsh with another drive that flaps wide. Trotje clears. Greg Smith knocks it down and fires. That one directed to Ken Morrow. Islanders want to get a change executed here as Greg Smith, big defenseman for Philadelphia, advances it off Brad Marsh to Derek Smith, who is sent down by Conroy. Derek King for the Islanders. 23 seconds of attack time. And well, they've finally got a couple of shots, and, and that's so important when you have a player like Tim Kerr that's getting beat up in front of the net. Diddick and Kerr, Potman and Kerr went at it the, all of the time they were in the zone. You have to start directing cuts at the net or you lose the advantage of having your big guy in front. Fans wanted a penalty on that one. You can see where a case could be made as Alan Kerr drills one wide. King with a shot, and that tipped away by LaForest. Moving to Alan Kerr's Marsh as the puck fed across. Scott Mellonby brings it back, falling his pot man. Mellonby moves in, and his shot is blocked by Smith. Rebound is poked away. Ron Sutter a drive, held by Smith. The clock is frozen with 14.20 to go in the third, and our game tied at three. At Volkswagen, our engineers believe car and driver should not merely act, but interact. To them, a Volkswagen isn't a vehicle for the driver, but rather an extension of the driver. Our engineers believe the most important moving part of a Volkswagen is the one behind the wheel. Lease a 1988 Jetta for only $139 a month at your participating Volkswagen dealer. Elsewhere around the NHL tonight, very late in the third period. It could be over for Quebec. They trail Buffalo 3-1. to one. Detroit, Washington tied at two, going into overtime. Pittsburgh is trailing New Jersey 4-0 late in the third period. Later on, Winnipeg and Vancouver. Let's get back to Long Island, Mike. What do they say about the Detroit Red Wings having a clear hold on first? 
and maybe not taking quite so many chances out there with the games being meaningless. They've battled Washington right into sudden death overtime. It's terrible playing teams that uh, that have already clinched or that are already uh, out of it. One way or the other, uh, teams that uh, don't have anything at stake are pretty dangerous. They play very loose. They're able to do things that they normally wouldn't do. It's, it's scary, just as scary to play a team that's uh, already cinched something one way or the other. Those are two of the best defensive teams in hockey. Low scoring game in overtime. Tom Mees will keep you posted. Here is Norton with a pass for Gilbert that tipped back down. Mark LaForest, who has meant so much to the Flyers' cause, especially recently and particularly tonight. In the first period, especially strong. Even though the Islanders scored twice, it could have been far more, and this game would not be the tie or the tight contest that it is. Trache looks, angles for Makala. Al Hill got there first. Trache takes the carom, but also the hit of Al. Samuelson pivoting on defense. His pass misses for Don Knockbauer, and down for the icing touch-up is Norton. Of course, the numbers on the clock get smaller. 13.31 to go in the third. We're tied here. What do you have, Tom? Well, we have an overtime game, Mike Emmerich, between the Washington Capitals, Detroit Red Wings, at the Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland. For a live update, let's join Mike Forge and Al Koch, and we're in overtime, tied at two. Herbert starts in, gives to Klima, two on one break. Here's Oates to Klima, fires! Just missing wide. DeLorme into the corner. Langway tries to block it. It comes back out for Norwood. Then to the other corner. Langway goes in again. It's a good grip in there in the corner, holding on with Probert. Pucks that up the board. Cleared back around behind the goal. Into the corner for Dale Hunter of the Capitol. Here's Hunter starting out. Hunter up to center ice. Put back inside. The Red Wings zone. The Washington Capitals changing on the fly. The Red Wings starting a line change, too. Here come the wings starting out. Lead pass to center. Ledyard breaks it up. Over to Scott Stevens. Stolen at the line. The wings still have it. Jim Neal can't get in for Ledyard, and Ledyard takes over now to Scott Stevens. Now to Greg Adams. Stevens starts the rush. Wine fires. Glove save. Stefan reaching out and grabbing that one. That one looked like it was headed for the top corner of the net. Adams and Steps talk it over now, right in front of the Red Wing goal. Boy, the Capitals opened up overtime with some glorious chances. Watch both Peter Sundstrom and David Christian with great chances. Murphy sends it through. There's Sundstrom all alone. A pad save. Then another pad save on Christian by Greg Steffen. At the other end, Adam Oates had a great scoring chance. Higgins comes in. Well, this is the this is the Higgins play. Shoots it up high. And Pete Peters is able to make the save there. Scott Stevens out just a second ago. Came down with a big blast. And Greg Steffen makes another fascinating love save. Washington calls time. that game with almost three minutes of overtime. We've seen Time out for the Washington Capitals with 2.07 left in overtime. We'll keep you posted. Let's get back now to Uniondale. Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement, the Flyers and Islanders still tied at three. With 12 minutes and eight seconds to go, there was one heart-stopping play. Billy Smith just failed to clear one, tried to sweep it to the corner and missed, but there were nothing but Islanders nearby at the time, so no harm done. And you've gotten a chance to see some tremendous action from the Capitol Center. 14th straight year. Philadelphia is going for their 16th straight Stanley Cup appearance. Boy, what wonderful organization. Philadelphia has had 16 consecutive winning seasons. The Islanders, 14 consecutive. And both teams have rebuilt thoroughly in that time. Crossman flips. Didick stops and slugs back. They're under 12 minutes to go, third period. 3-3 three to three the score. Makala controlled for the Islanders. Ron Sutter all over him. The play is back for Makala. Doug Crossman jousted there. Good shoulder check put on him by Gilbert. And a minor penalty will come up to Greg Smith for knocking down Basson. 
Chance for the Islanders to break the tie. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, the door. I love the wise of folks, just look and see. It's a doorknob, it's a dead boat, it's extra security. No new hole to drill, so easy to install. Replace your old knob with wiser bolt, baby, it won't hurt at all. Get a wiser bolt, it's a doorknob and a dead bolt, all in one. It's the lock the doors love. For the nearest store with wiser bolt, call 1-800-458-LOCK. Gets a holding minor at 8.23. That means 11.37 to play in regulation time. We'll take a look at it in the corner. There's Bob Basson working away. Boy, I'll tell you what. It's tough to call a, a penalty like that at this stage of the game. Greg Smith was in there doing his work. Buck pops to Brent Sutter. Samuelson takes it. Flips and gets it out. All over him was Trotje, but Samuelson could coolly control. Now Dennis Potvin starts it ahead to Brent Sutter, trying to get away from Poulin. Two on one, outmanned by Samuelson, but the puck comes to Janssen. Janssen with a 360 to Trotje and back to Potvin. Hurried it along, but Howe is able to clear. 30 seconds gone on the power play. LaFontaine starts in, tries to get by Samuelson again. Down he goes. And there'll be a five-on-three power play coming up to the Islanders. Samuelson does not believe it. Mike Keenan is angrily hammering a stick at the Philadelphia bench. He might get more for that, Mike. I think he's got a real, real strong case right here. A real strong case. Let's return to Tom Meese for action in Washington. All right, Mike Emrick, under 35 seconds left in the overtime. Detroit and Washington tied at two. Here again, Mike Florence and Al Koken with an update. We welcome our ESPN viewers once again. 25 seconds to play here in sudden death overtime. 2-2 score. Here's Hunter to Larry Murphy at the point. Now feeds it back to Hunter. A shot deflected just wide. Gould was parked right in front and got a stick on it. Now Sundstrom tries to dig it out. To Bobby Gould. Ten seconds left. Gould held up behind the net. The Red Wings take over. Here's Oates to play it. He starts out to Probert. Three seconds. Probert to center ice. Long drive and Peters makes the grab. And this game ends a 2-2 overtime tie. And so one point for Detroit, but one point for the Washington Capitals. As of this moment, the Caps and Islanders are tied for first in the Patrick Division. The Flyers are two men down. Let's get back to Mike Emmerich and Bill Fullman. Boy, if things haven't gone bad enough in this month of March for Mike Dean, and here he is in a 3-3 tie. Now he's down two men. Samuelson and Smith, two of his defensemen in the box. There's the man that has incurred the wrath of Mike Keenan. Mike won't let him go. What Keenan has to be careful now that he doesn't end up with a bench penalty, Mike. It's tough enough. It's going to be tough enough to kill off these two penalties. He's got to show enough discipline, too, not to dig a little deeper hole. He's obviously upset. It's almost unheard of in a game like this that's so important to both teams. Down to 10 minutes to go in the third period for a referee to call a penalty, unless it's completely blatant, completely overt, and I wouldn't call that call that he made on Samuelson a completely overt call. The iron three are Ron Sutter, Howe, and Craven. For the Islanders, they'll use Potvin, Brent Sutter, LaFontaine, Croce, and also up front, Thomas Janssen. Potvin creeps, drops to Croce, over to Janssen, back to Croce again. Moving to the front is Trache as Janssen cradles. Hands to Potvin. Over to LaFontaine. Potvin is shot. Save, LaForest. Rebound is cleared by Ron Sutter. Boy, and is, is LaForest ever angry with Trache? You know that there is going to be a lot of stick swinging by the Flyers, but there's also going to be a lot of people right in front of LaForest on this situation. That time it was Trache. Janssen steers behind for Trache. Oh, look at this for a break for the Flyers. Oh, well, they never got it out. Trache looks for Brent Sutter, but passed it to Poulin. Cleared by Craven. Boy, could this be a turnaround for the Flyers, Mike, if they kill this off? The reason I mentioned that there will be sticks swinging by the Flyers, you have to, you end up paying the price on a five-on-three. When you're only three guys out there killing a penalty, you swat anything that comes within a stick swinging distance of you. 
you think Andy Van Helleman might be watching now for a retaliation penalty on the part of the Islanders if such stick swinging took place so that you might be able to take a man off? I would like to think no. But my, I guess my common sense is telling me that since it happens so often, we could watch for it. What a good save by LaForest. But you can see the Islanders were never able to get in tight for the screen. We saw that whole shot, didn't we, from sitting here. Greg Smith of the Islanders tended to Brent Sutter earlier and is dealing with a photographer right now. As you see Philadelphia's remaining schedule, two with Quebec, a team which could, as Bill Clement indicated, become dangerous because by the end of the night they may be out of it. Washington on the final night at the Spectrum. Islanders have Washington here on Thursday at New Jersey Saturday afternoon and at Boston Garden on Sunday. Let's return to Tom Meese. All right, Mike Emmerich, thank you very much. You talked about the Quebec Nordiques. Well, they are officially out of it. Darren Pupa, the Buffalo Sabre netminder, out of RPI, 46 saves tonight in a 3-1 to victory over Quebec. Quebec is out. Buffalo will finish third. The Hartford Whalers are now in as the fourth-place team in the Adams Division. Let's go back to Uniondale. Well, there is a picture of shall we call it the pending dejection? That's Rick Tockett, who is out of uniform tonight with a shoulder separation. How coincidental could things be? Both he and Peter Zezel have uh, minor separations of the left shoulder. That is Rick Tockett. Zezel is not behind the bench. And I asked them both before the game, Mike, which one was healing faster. And I think Peter Zezel is winning the healing race. Rick Tockett is a little bit behind Peter Zezel. We've talked about the injuries the Flyers have had. Listen to these players who miss games in March. Mark Howe, Kerry Huffman, Pelly Eklund, Tim Kerr, Ron Sutter, Craig Berube, Dave Poulin, Dave Brown, Ilka Sinisalo, Peter Zezel, Ron Hextall, Murray Craven, Willie Huber, and Rick Tockett, who had just scored 14 goals in six games. He was their biggest loss because he was the hottest player. That was one of the photographers that sits down by the, uh, by the boards. We haven't had a chance to, to mention that to you. He was hit with a puck. That was one of the reasons we've had a delay. Here we go again. The Islanders still have a two-man advantage. They have it for 20 more seconds, and then a five-on-four for 30 seconds. LaFontaine checked by Howe. King swung it in front, and the puck off Poulin, then tipped back out. Gerald Diddick back to get it. LaFontaine swirling to his right. The pass up the left was a bit too far for King to handle, and play breaks down. Now it's a five-on-four. What a costly missed pass that was, Mike, coming through the neutral zone. You don't have to hurry it. It's a five-on-three. The quickest way to kill a five-on-three for at least 15 seconds is to make a bad pass in the neutral zone. LaFontaine with a shot. Squirted through Crossman at the front of the net. Oh, and Makala feeds to the back. Norton scores! Jeff Norton's first goal in the National Hockey League. And did the 22-year-old Olympian from Acton, Massachusetts, out of the University of Michigan, ever pick a time, Mike, for his first big-time goal? I'm not sure that it was deflected, but it was sure Norton that got rid of it. He's being congratulated. LaFontaine goes in. All kinds of flyers end up lying down trying to stop this situation. There goes Greg Smith. Here comes the pass back to Norton from Makala. It went off Mark Howe. Right off Mark Howe's arm or his glove, right up over Mark before us. What a heads up play by Makala, Mike. And Norton caught every ounce of that one by three inch piece of rubber. Mark LaForest shattered his stick after the goal and has had one taken to him. The team that is tied with Washington for first for right now has just gone ahead. 10.44 of the third period is the time. Thomas Janssen starts back ahead. It was a power play goal. Janssen feeds for the breaking LaFontaine. Samuelson guides it back to Tim Kerr. His pass is to Sinisano. And there will be a penalty on Thomas Johnson. 8.56 left in the third. 4-3 Islanders. Volkswagen engineers have developed a remarkable fuel injection system. 
which gives our Jetta 17% more horsepower than before. Of course, there are those Volkswagen engineers who believe they've developed something no less remarkable. The brakes. Lease a 1988 Jetta for only $139 a month at your participating Volkswagen dealer. It has been an ecstatic March 28. Action abounding. They're celebrating in Buffalo. They are very happy in Hartford because the Whalers have secured fourth. Buffalo, definitely now third. Huck Karam's back out on the power play. And there are other celebrations that are hoped for, especially in Patrick Division City. But it doesn't look like those will come until the final night as Hal collides with his teammate, Ilka Sinasalo. And the fans like that. Flyers having some trouble. Now Eklund leads the rush in, but is taken off the puck by Potvin. Brent Sutter can't clear. Samuelson fires one blocked away by Billy Smith. How checked hard by Gilbert. Puck cleared. One fifteen to go power play. 8-10 left in the third. Morrow in deep. Anticipating and able to play with Eklund. It's banked for Tim Kerr. Kerr has been silenced tonight by the Islanders. Eklund on back and it's skipped away from Hoffman. 11 minutes to go, or check that, 7.45 to go. I took a look at a wrong clock momentarily, I apologize. 45 seconds remaining now on the penalty to the Islanders. Buck fed back and Huffman shot, chopped at by Craven, but blocked by Smith and brought back up by Trotje. Shift change for the Islanders. Brent Sutter comes out to work with Zittick. Gilbert and Potvin are the other two Islanders to penalty kill. Craven starts in. Flips one that is knocked down by Mellonby and unable to stuff it home on the backhander was Brian Prop. Cleared by the Islanders. Doug Crossman Tibbet. 10 seconds to go on the power play. Leads one ahead for Mellonby. Cleared back down and LaForest must take over. You'll hear a roar. Be a drive, but the play was offside. We'll be back in just a moment. The new Volkswagen Fox is a lot of car for the money. For instance, a powerful 1.8 liter fuel injected engine is standard. So are power front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, and four wheel independent suspension. Now we could have done what some did cut the standard features and offered less car for less money. But we'd never pull a stunt like that. That isn't the Volkswagen way. 1988 Fox. Only 62.90. They're happy at Long Island because the Islanders lead the Flyers 4-3 late. They're even happier across the river a few miles where the New Jersey Devils at home have shut out the Pittsburgh Penguins 4-0. First NHL shutout for goaltender Sean Burke, who was brilliant tonight. The Devils creep closer. Let's go back to Long Island. Mike Emmerich and Bill Clement. In 1984, the Devils were out of a playoff berth on February the 2nd. They're still hot as we reach the final half of the final week. Morrow wraps it for Makala. It kicks to Brown. Has to duel with Makala and Basson, and Basson clears. Greg Smith to get it. Clock leads down to 6-10. Billy Smith saw it skip by him, but right there to help out was Dale Henry. Smith keeps play moving with a shot that pinballed. Dave Brown tried to force it in front, and it's flexed away by Smith. Brent Sutter flips. Henry checked by Greg Smith, but ahead comes Janssen. Wood on the wing. Offside is the call. Well, you talk about a dramatic situation here. Islanders tie the game early in the third, and then five on three. The Flyers kill off the first part of it, but come just a few seconds short of killing off the second part. Tonight on ESPN, you're seeing Islanders Flyers 
right after this, Hunnigan and Baca from Wembley Stadium in London, England. WBC welterweight boxing, and it's for the title. There's a title at stake here in the NHL, and you'll be able to follow it all the way on ESPN, and here's a chance for Derek King. Samuelson trying to get back. It's King in. Save made by LaForest, snatching it out of the air. And the drama will continue. Are you sure he's 1B? Man, oh man, he's played like number one tonight. The puck did roll up on end on Derek King, so I don't think he was able to get it as high as he wanted to. And he had to come all the way cross ice to get it. Watch when it comes up on end. There it is. Let's see if it's up on edge when he shoots. You're up. It was yep. rolling. Perhaps he would have been able to get it up a little higher. There it is, up on end. Pretty tough to do anything with it, but you could see LaForest was waiting for that anyway. If he pulls it to his forehand, he has him, but with the puck rolling, that makes it even tougher to do anything with it. Gerald Dittick, a shot, save, rebound, score! <laughs> Mr. Clutch for this year, Pat LaFontaine. Five to three, the Islanders. Once again, LaForest is able to make the first save. But another offensive rebound that the New York Islanders control. They got two goals in the first period on rebounds. There's one by LaFontaine this period on a rebound. And with 5.28 to go, the Islanders have a two-goal lead. That should be enough at this stage, Mike. Ryan Trotsay moving in. Save made by LaForest, and then that one turned away by the defense. Islanders have come at the Flyers in waves here in the last couple of shifts. Sutter tries to finesse. Bodied off by Norton. Brian Trottier lays it across to Makala. Watched on the play by Huffman. Tries to force it through, but Crossman is there. Then laid back on to Derek Smith, who's been absent for a while. Conroy drops it back in. Chance taking time for the Flyers. Conroy stopped by Huffman. 440 left in the third. In case you're just joining us, Washington has pulled into a first place tie. Centering pass for Prop knocked away. The Islanders can be back up by two in the Patrick Division race if they can seal this one up. LaForest swings it. Henry moves with it. Taken out by Prop, and then Crossman just pawed down by Wood. Eklund trying to be the extra man that will help, but it swung away from him. Pot Van lays it for Wood. Crossman working on him. Back to Pot Van, who sailed it wide. Henry checked by Poulin. Under four minutes to play. Mark Howe steps out with it. Ship change on for Philadelphia. That's why he's pivoting. Picking up wingers and feeds to Samuelson. And Samuelson's drive is off the stick of Billy Smith. Billy Smith with a losing record against Philadelphia in his career. Facing them for the first time this season. But a big year for Smith. On an option, 16, 13, and 5. LaForest makes that block. And Eklund throws it in deep. LaFontaine with 3.10 to go. Crom can't tip it out. Big Shell Samuelson in the way. Craven's pass came right to Ken Morrow. And it's thrown out of play. Three minutes to play in the third. Islanders by two. He's responsible. How y'all are? You know me, I've been cooking and eating real Cajun food longer than my belly stomach is wide, and that's a fact. So when I told you you're going to like Cajun spice ruffled potato chips more better than them other Cajun potato chips, I'm not just whistling digs, you know. 
I'm singing you a Bayou Serenade. I guarantee. Mm -hmm. Only Cajun Spice flavored Ruffles brand potato chips have those spicy Ruffles ridges, so the taste won't leave you flat. Oh, in the evening breeze, a whisper through the tree. Well, Ron Sutter will be in for an important face-off opposite a guy who's taken so many since he first arrived here in the 70s, Brian Trotche. Remember last year in Landover in that multi-overtime game, so many defensive face-offs he took. Trotche tripped up, shuffles it ahead to Gilbert. Mark LaForest again, the gallant warrior in the Philadelphia crease tonight. This one swung around the glass and out of play, so there'll be no penalty. Only the penalty of distance in the face-off to be back in the team of that man, Mike Keenan, who erupted and started banging a stick on the rail when the second of the two penalties was called, putting his team down five men to three. Barry Simpson working the gum over well at the Islanders' bench. I don't think you'd ever see Terry smash a stick against the boards, though. He's pretty reserved. Trotche again for this face-off with the time left in this contest superimposed. Ron Sutter's pass tipped away. Janssen goes back. If the Islanders win, two points up on Washington. And there'll be about, we would hope, five to 10,000 more people who will want to see the game here on Thursday than will be able to get tickets. Sellouts rare here this year. For an inexplicable reason, interesting, hard-working team, tradition of winning here. Didick moving in, angles one that Samuelson is there to play, backhands it, but into Wood. 2.05 left. Samuelson shoves it back, comes for a shift change. Dave Poulin is the first one to it. Brian Propp was behind it. Poulin backhanded one, and then Kerr had a slot at it, but was denied by the checking of Wood. Huffman hit by Henry. Puck spun back in. It's an onside play, but the Islanders have it. Potvin had his pass checked away by Tim Kerr. Didick lifts it higher. 100 seconds left. Long pass from LaForest to Poulin. Trop taken out by LaFontaine. Puck swung by Morrow. Norton tries to lift it. And Kerr is able to clear further. There's fire brewing here in the seats at the Nassau Coliseum. Fans have been really picked up by the victory over Edmonton, and now tonight an apparent one over Philadelphia. Crossman's drive is chipped into them. What a memorable night. I'm sure he's got a lot of memories from an exciting year. But what a night to get number one. He has played an outstanding hockey game tonight, Mike. You know, when, when a kid comes in on defense especially, this is Jeff Norton, 22 years old at the University of Michigan, played in the Olympics. It's a tough struggle to adjust. This is the NHL. This is the best. And it's really difficult for most people to adjust when they come in at a young age on defense. I have watched Jeff Norton closely tonight. I haven't seen him make even anything that was close to a mistake. Mark LaForest on the bench. The Flyers have the extra attacker out. Norton's been wonderful. They're even, but for right now. Washington and the Islanders meet here on Thursday. If the score remains the same, the Islanders will enter that game with 86 points. Two better than Washington. Five better than Philadelphia. And if Philadelphia sits at 81, the Rangers, Pittsburgh, and New Jersey are closer to them Boy. than the Flyers are to number one. It's gonna go right down to the last day. You know that? There will be some decisions made on Sunday. One of them will be in Bristol, Connecticut. And it'll be as to where Bill Clement and I and John Glassy, our statistician, and our producers and our road crew will be. We can't tell you yet. But keep watching ESPN for announcements. Hand pass ruled against the Islanders and a face off again to come near Smith. Terry Simpson, the quiet man. 
Very difficult to figure out what a man that is very quiet is all about. You almost have to play with him. You know, the number of times that you talk to Terry Simpson, you can tell that he's friendly. You can tell that he's reasonably intense, but he's always quick to smile. Mike Keenan, tense, heat up. Really a contrast in personalities between Simpson and Keenan. Last minute of play in the period. Puck gloved ahead by Janssen. Kept by Howe. Flipped to the front and a hand pass again on the Islanders. A lot of fire in this game tonight and all around the league. And right after, we'll turn our attention to boxing from Wembley Stadium in London, England. Baca and Cunningham. It's for the title. Well, Tim Kerr has been kept off the board tonight. Sutter with a goal and an assist. Mellonby with two assists. A shot by Howe knocked down and Kerr with a shot ricocheted off Smith. Howe turns one around. Smith poked at it. Puck came to the front. They kick at it toward the goal. Samuelson kicks, but Smith stops. With such a crowd in front of the net, Mike, all the Flyers want to do is get the puck out there. Samuelson, even if he's not kicking to score here, did the right thing by kicking it towards Billy Smith. You have to feel at this stage that you have help out there for a rebound. There it is. You just have to hope that somebody's going to be in there for a rebound. God knows there are enough guys in orange out there. There are six. Jill Samuelson was jawing in the direction of referee Andy Van Helleman, at least in the area of the ice where he was situated when the whistle was blown. Ray Scapinello to put it between Kerr, Brent Sutter. Brent Sutter got the first goal and then was a playmaker in the goal that wound up tying this game early in the third. Norton made it 4-3, LaFontaine 5-3. Alan Kerr clears through Howe. What'll it do? It's headed wide. 35 seconds to go. Regulation time. Islanders with a big two-goal lead. And staring again at first place, which was only shared with them tonight for about 10 minutes. Conroy touches up on the icing. Back it'll come in the end of the ice where the net is empty. Player of the game, Bill, you just talked about him a bit. The Massachusetts born Norton. There he sits beside the Gatorade jug. He wears number eight <laughs> for the New York Islanders. He's our Ruffles player of the game, and the thing that's remarkable is that Terry Simpson has enough confidence in him to even have him out there on that five-on-three power play that he scored on. That tells you what kind of presence he has in this Islanders lineup. Scores his first NHL goal. Unless the score changes, it will go down as the winning goal of this hockey game, which was a huge one for the New York Islanders. So Jeff Norton will have a, a tough time wiping that smile off his face tonight, and he is our Ruffles player of the game. There'll be sleepless nights involving players and coaches at both benches here tonight. Maybe it won't be Terry Simpson who will have the sleepless night, but there'll be some in orange. Jeff Norton will have happy difficulty trying to get to rest and to come down from a big night for him. You hear the crowd chant it down. One team moves back into first. Another is a little further away. 5-3 Islanders. Pretty decent hockey game for the Islanders. Better than a decent hockey game. Their strength is a balanced attack, Mike, and strength up the middle with their centers. Sutter, Trottier, and LaFontaine. All the centers played well tonight, and it was a balanced attack. They got a little bit from here, a little bit from there. They were dominant when they had to be in a lot of situations on one-on-one -on -one confrontations. And Terry Simpson has a lot to be proud of. Our score here, Islanders 5, Philadelphia 3. Eyeballing all of those monitors tonight and picking our 7-up play of the night on me. All right, thank you very much, Mike Emmerich. The Islanders with a big victory, but our play of the night, our 7-up play of the night, comes from the game between the Buffalo Sabres and the Quebec Nordiques in the play of goaltender Darren Poopa, who made many a save and series of saves like this. 46 saves in all, facing 47 Quebec Nordique shots. The play of Darren Poopa, our 7-up play of the night. Our final score, the Islanders over Philadelphia by a score of 5-3. to three. We'll be back with more in the NHL tonight as we continue to wrap it up in a moment.
Washington skate to a two-hole tie. The Capitals in second place, two points now behind the New York Islanders. Pittsburgh losing at New Jersey. The Devils now have uh, caught fire. They lead, uh, rather, they beat uh, Pittsburgh 4 nothing. They're only a point behind Pittsburgh and the Rangers for the fourth and final playoff spot. And Winnipeg and Vancouver, that game started just a few minutes ago. No score in the first period of play. Our final score tonight, New York Islanders with three third period goals, vanquishing the Philadelphia Flyers by a score of 5-3. to three. So the Islanders still lead the Patrick Division by a whopping two points over Washington and five points now over Philadelphia, which is uh, in third place. Let's take a look at the standings now in the Patrick Division. You will see what I mean. The big race now is for fourth and final between Pittsburgh, the Rangers, and New Jersey. And Philadelphia cannot rest easy yet. In the uh, Adams Division, Boston mathematically could still catch Montreal. It looks like Montreal finished first. That's not nailed down. What is nailed down is that Hartford is in the playoffs and Quebec is out. And we'll be back with more in the NHL tonight. Okay, Coming days, check with Sports Center to find out which game we will telecast for you on Sunday night. Up next, it's the WBC welterweight title fight from London. Good night from the NHL tonight.